Welcome to this brand new screencast series on object-oriented design patterns. Now, you might already know if you've been watching this channel before that I have a series, a playlist on object-oriented design patterns, which is more in a whiteboard format, so more like a classic lecture format. And if you're more interested in the high-level, big-picture sort of kind of theoretical discussion around design patterns, I would highly recommend that series. But what I want to do with this series is I want to go down into the code and actually concretely look at these in a statically typed language. And the language I'll choose for, for these for the series is C sharp. So but I mean, if you're working with Java, for example, or if you're more familiar with Java, no problem. I mean, they're essentially the same language, right. But the point being that some of you have requested or actually many of you have requested that we do sort of another series where we or essentially that, that I do screencasts on design patterns because it's useful to look at the actual code. So that's what I want to do here. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep it simple. Uh, so again, we're going to use C sharp and I'm going to try just typing out every class into a single file. And please let me know in the comments if you think that this turns out unuseful or if it becomes difficult to get an overview like spontaneously I think it might be easier to do it that way because you can sort of see everything in one file rather than having things disappear in different files and you having to keep that uh, remembered in in your head sort of but let me know what you think I'll also try to find a way of posting the code I'll probably put this in github but uh, check the description for that um, but yeah so let's get into it. I guess this is episode numero uno. So what we are talking about today is essentially strategy pattern. I didn't, uh, I forgot to mention also, what I want to do is I want to try to stick to the examples that I've mentioned in this other series, which by the way, if you haven't seen that series, I'll link that in description. But I'll try to stick to those examples. But I mean, clearly, some of the examples I chose are pretty stupid, and I'll, I'll divert uh, from them. But mm, I'll try to stick to the gist of it. Okay. Let's get into strategy pattern, right? I've picked up strategy pattern here on Wikipedia. And we can just let's just read this first paragraph together, right? In computer programming, the strategy pattern also known as the policy pattern is a behavioral software pattern, a software design pattern that enables selecting an algorithm at runtime, right? This is this is sort of the key point of strategy pattern, it enables the selection of an algorithm, not at compile time, but at runtime. So it, it, it allows you to vary different algorithms, it, it allows you to choose between different algorithms at runtime rather than at compile time. Now you can choose still at compile time, no problem, right? But it allows you the 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 ability to to vary at runtime. Uh, so instead of implementing a single al algorithm directly, code receives runtime instructions as to which family of algorithms to use. Um, well, instead of implementing a single algorithm directly, code receives runtime instructions as to which, yeah, yeah, I'm not actually entirely sure what they mean by that. But like, instead of actually choosing a particular algorithm, or like hard coding a particular algorithm, you have the capacity to choose whichever one you want from a given family of algorithm, like you couple to the family of algorithms rather than coupling to the any specific algorithm. I, I think that's an appropriate way of thinking about it, right? You have a set of different algorithms. And instead of coupling to each any any particular one, instead of hard coding to any particular one, you simply um, couple to the uh, to the abstraction, like you couple to to the collection of these algorithms, you couple to the family of these algorithms. And uh, then at runtime, you can choose any of the members of, of, of this family. So I'm realizing immediately, it's going to be difficult for me to try to stick to the code and, and not get into all of the theoretical discussions and all that. But I'll try to stick to the code. And and uh, if you think that I'm kind of glancing over particular topics, uh, again, I highly recommend that you check out my other series if you think that I'm skipping pieces here, but that's because the existence of that other series. But let's get into it. So I have here a, a empty folder. Oh my god, caps lock. Okay, I have I have here an empty folder, as you can see, there's nothing in this. Uh, and again, I'm just gonna do the make this very simply. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna use C sharp, I'm not gonna use Visual Studio, I'm actually on a Mac. Uh, maybe now you can use Visual Studio on a Mac, but whatever, like, we're just we're just gonna use uh, the, the terminal. So I'm just gonna use uh, Vim. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a file and we're gonna call it program.cs. And uh, then let's just say we have a class, which is our program. And then we have a public static entry point, which is called main takes no arguments. And let's just say console, a uh, right line, hello world, just to make sure that we've sort of wired up everything correctly. And of course, to have console the right line, I need using a system, something like that, right. 
Uh, and then to compile this, let me, so notice sometimes I'm typing down here in the, th then I'm typing commands to, to Vim, right? Um, and don't worry about the Vimness, right? I mean, try to, so, so I, I am most comfortable using Vim when I, when I do stuff, but I mean, clearly you can use any text editor that you want and that's completely fine. Um, but try to focus on the code instead of the uh, Vim weirdness if that throws you off, right? But I'm just gonna um, bind the keystroke here or map a keystroke to, um, to, to, to compiling this particular file. So I have MCS uh, set up here, which I guess is like the mono compiler of, for C Sharp. Uh, and we're gonna compile program.cs and then we're gonna hit return. So let's just try that out. We hit the keystroke. Uh, I have nothing out, so I assume that means that we compiled it successfully. So let's just see. Yes, yeah, so now we, we, we created the file program.cs and now we also have program program.exe. Or uh, yeah, yeah, well, we have the executable, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, then we're also gonna compile a, or map a, another keystroke to, to running that file. So I mean, Remember, we're in this sort of compile and then run loop. So if you're in Visual Studio, you hit F5 and then you compile and run. But I want to separate these into two different things so that we're not accidentally running the old version, even though our compilation failed, right? So I want to be sure that we successfully catch any any potential errors that, that I get while uh, typing out the code. Anyways, um, so how do we run that? Well, that's with mono and we run program.exe like this so let's run that and then we can see we get hello world out okay so it seems like we're sort of wired up correctly okay so now we have a place to write our code so what do we want to do well in the video I, I gave you an example of lots of different ducks which was sort of a variation of a classic lots of ducks example and I think that's uh, well, I mean that was from the from the book head first uh, design patterns. By the way, that is a great book if you want to get into design patterns. Now, there, there are sort of two, two great books for design patterns. One is uh, head first design patterns. And the other one is the gang of four original design patterns book. And that's the one that sort of introduced or put design patterns on, on the map. Um, the head first book is, is great if you want something that's more pedagogical. And the um, the, the Gang of Four book is great if you want to have something which, which is more like condensed and just straight to the point, right? But getting both is, is a, I mean, you won't regret it. Excellent advice, right? So I'll, I'll put the links to those books in the description. Moving on, okay. Why was I talking about head first? So I was saying that uh, we were talking about ducks, right? So, so the example that we talked about in, uh, in that video was something along the lines of this, right? We had, uh, an interface or something like this where we have like there's there's the notion of a duck or maybe maybe it was even a super class so let's say there's there's something like a duck actually let's let's say it's an interface for now what am I doing interface a uh, duck and, and what ducks can do is that they need to have a method that returns a string and is called fly let's say so there would be some fly behavior here like the, the, the all different ducks fly in different ways but I'm gonna return a string here because I want to use that string uh, to to represent different implementations right we're just gonna say flying with jet engines or like flying like a professional duck or whatever just just to sort of uh, indicate the idea of different implementations but instead of having some kind of complex logic we're just gonna use strings right um, so then we have different ducks, right? And and I had really strange names for ducks, and I, so I wrote them down here so I could use the same ducks because I I, I would probably never remember them. Um, how do I? Sorry, it's been a while since I was in C sharp. Do I do inheritance like this? Yeah. So while duck uh, inherits from duck, uh, and if it does that, that means it needs to have a public method that returns a string and is called fly. Let me just see. Does that okay? And then we'll just say return foo just to make sure this compiles. Let me see if I, yeah, so I wired that correctly, right? So how does wild ducks fly? So let's say uh, seriously wild flying, right? So the, we'll just return the string seriously wild flying. Uh, so that's the way that wild ducks fly, right? And then uh, instead of this, uh, this, this uh, uh, like hello world statement that we printed here, let's instead say that, oops, let's say that we have a, a duck which uh, we call duck, and we'll say it's a new uh, wild duck. Wild, my God, wild duck. Oh, typing. 
<laughs> and then we'll say we'll console uh, console right line will print duck dot uh, fly. So let's just try this out. We'll compile and then we'll run. And then you can see as output we get serious, seriously wild flying as a string, right? So okay, so so that works. We have an implementation of a wild duck. Okay. Then let's do the next one. Let's say that there's also a city duck. Okay. So there's a city duck implementing or inheriting. Yeah, sorry, implementing the interface duck, and it also has a uh, public method that returns a string and is called fly, and uh, and let's say that just like swooshes through traffic, right? Or like m maybe maybe high intensity flying. So I'm trying to come up with sort of ways of flying that isn't directly coupled to the notion of cityness, but is sort of indicative of a particular way of flying. So so city ducks have this sort of high intensity flying uh, that compiles fine, and we can of course now exchange our wild duck for a, a city duck. Let's say city duck run that or sorry compile and then run that and we can see that we get high intensity flying whereas before we had seriously wild flying so that seems to work fine right and then we had a bunch of more ducks like this so we had like the uh, mountain duck duck please feel free to uh fast forward until i type this out so we have a fly method here oh my lord and then we return I don't know, like, uh, ah, so something like high altitude flying. Actually, this is perfect, right? So then we have high altitude flying, and then we have, let's say, a cloud duck, duck, in inheriting the interface duck, and then we have a public string, a uh, sorry, fly. I'm just <laughs> this <laughs> this weirdness when you are thinking faster than you're actually typing. It's super tricky, man. And actually, let's say that the high uh, the, the the cloud duck actually also uh, performs high altitude flying, which kind of makes sense, right? If you think about the names, right? Like mountain ducks live high up in the mountains. I'm sorry, not that any of this makes any sense from a sort of semantic perspective, <laughs> but like within this fake world that we've made up now, so it, it kind of makes sense that mountain ducks would fly high up in the mountains, which would be high altitude, and cloud ducks would fly high up in the mountain, which would also be sort of high altitude, so high altitude flying for both of them. And now the the point here is is, is that we're not we're not using inheritance, right? So I was saying that we were using inheritance in the video in the other video, but uh, but here I'm actually using an interface, and it doesn't really matter too much, right? The point is that we've created a bunch of different classes, right, that have uh, different implementations of the method fly, right, and some of them are the same. So, so the implementation for whoa, what did I press now? Sorry, the the fly the implementation of the method fly for cloud ducks is exactly the same implementation as that for mountain ducks. Like literally, they're exactly the same. Okay, now this isn't an issue if this is everything that fly du that ducks do, right? If they only have this fly method. But let's say that we also have, let's say, a display method. Uh, so, I mean, we're disregarding the fact that you probably shouldn't have like a display method in these, in, in ducks, like that probably doesn't really make any sense. But I mean, we're just completely making up an arbitrary uh, scenario. And let's say, let's actually say that display is void. Uh, and maybe yeah, what would vary here? That that makes no sense. Yeah, let's actually not do no 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 no. It's too confusing. Let's let's do it this way. So let's say uh, we have a walk or stroll or something like this. Yeah. So let's say walk. Okay. So walk, uh, and then maybe they walk in different ways. Oh my god! And I have to implement all this stuff. This is probably why I chose to do this on a whiteboard. <laughs> so then we have walk here. Uh, so sorry, I'm mixing two different ways of uh, lining up these parentheses. Let's do the spaced version. Okay, uh, return uh, walking wildly. Okay, and then let's actually let's copy this. Let's go here, and then let's say for the city duck, it's walking what? It's like walking ah uh, casually, and then for the for the mountain duck is like yeah so maybe that's like well never walks right maybe that makes sense actually no actually uh, so 
flies or stands still, right? So because if you're in the mountains, you would maybe not be walking around if it's sort of very steep. I mean, this is very, very silly. I'm just, <laughs> just saying there are different implementations here. And then for the cloud duck, maybe we would do for something, something like, like fly or die, right? It's like, well, either you keep flying or you just fall to the ground. Sorry, this is a bit, this is a bit harsh. Let's, let's say uh, fly always. So, so, okay, so, so no walking. <laughs> Sorry, that's, 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 that's uh, more friendly. Um, so, okay, so then we have a bunch of different implementations. And if, if we would do this in a, in a way that's less, uh, let's say, um, uh, less silly, so if we would clean up these strings, we could actually say something like this. Well, the implementation here, we could call uh, A the implementation, the fly implementation here, we could call B, right? I'm emphasizing that those are different. The implementation here, we could call C, but the implementation here, we would also call C, the fly implementation, because those are the same, okay? But then, and then the walking implementation here, we would call D, right? Because that's a different, it's a completely new implementation. And then we have the walking implementation here, that's com also a different implementation, so let's call that E. But then, yeah, I'm sorry, and this one, we, we call uh, F, also a different implementation. And this one we call, whoops, this one we call G because it's also a different implementation, right? So notice how uh, wild duck has nothing in common with anybody else, city duck has nothing in common with anybody else, mountain duck has its fly method in common with the cloud duck, right? And just to make this, but, but, but their walk methods are, are different, right? But just to make this a bit more complicated, what we could do is that we could do something like, let's say, let's say the walk method of the fly duck is actually the same as the walk method of the city duck. So let's make, let's make this E, right? So then we have this interesting scenario where there is some commonality between mountain duck and cloud duck but there's also some co commonality between mountain duck and city duck. And this is where in the, in the whiteboard video where I talked about sharing code horizontally, like inheritance is no issue, like it's, it's a sensible way of approaching things when you only have reuse sort of downwards or upwards, depending on which way you think about it. But when you want to reuse across, like horizontally across multiple different types, like it just doesn't work. And, and then there's that interesting quote, which I think is from Sandy Metz, where she says that, where she says that the, solution, the, solutions to, the solution to problems caused by inheritance is not, by, is not more inheritance, right? So, so, so she's using that in the context of saying that um, multiple inheritance is not the, the way to address this problem. So which way, what is the way to address this kind of problem? Ho I mean, hopefully you can see the problem, by the way. I mean, the point is that this method, the, implement, the, the line 29 here is exactly the same as line 38 here, right? And line 35 is exactly the same as line 44 here. But we can't find out, we can't find a way without multiple inheritance using sort of normal inheritance to, to avoid duplicating this code without, for example, creating like a new uh, class and just hard code in that class and delegate to that class. Now, of course, you could do it that way, right? You could do it that way, but that's less flexible than what we're about to do, right? Because that only gives us compile time variation. But what we're going to look at is strategy pattern, which gives you runtime variation of dif different algorithms. So let me undo back from, or maybe, wait, I, I'm, considering whether I should keep the letters. It's more confusing with the letters, right? Than just having this. No, it's actually probably not. Like you'll have to, let, let, me, let me know in the comments. I'll go for, I'll go for the letters. And then if you think that, that it, was, it, it would have been better if I stayed with natural language descriptions for these strings, let me know and I'll make sure to use more natural language and less sort of like, uh, I guess just identifiers or, or less sort of just cold to say this thing is different from this thing. Uh, but let me know and I'll try to correct for the next video. Um, but let's, so let's say city ducks and mountain ducks walk the same way. And I thought maybe actually, like if you think about it, we were saying that city ducks walk casually, but maybe they walk carefully, let's say. And then it makes sense for mountain ducks to walk carefully as well because they don't want to fall off the edge. Doesn't matter, but, but let's move forward, right? So the question is, how do we reuse this code? Well, what we could do, is we could simply say this, a duck, uh, we, de we dependency inject a strategy into a duck 
and that strategy defines the way that that duck is walking and flying, right? But that's a different strategy. So what would that mean for the wild duck? Well, let's create a constructor for wild duck. So wild duck has a constructor that takes, uh, let's say we're pretending we have this interface now, that, that takes an interface which is called uh, walk behavior, behavior. Uh, let's call it B for, for behavior, right? And then I'm just gonna say this, uh, walk, Walking, walk behavior, yeah, okay, let's say walk behavior, super long word, is equal to B, right? And what we're gonna do later is we're gonna not just pass that, but we're also gonna pass fly behavior, right? But let's let's take one step at a time. Uh, so we're passing in walk behavior, and we are, uh, we are setting that to an instance variable, which means we of course need that uh, instance variable, so let's call that walk behavior, it's of, oh sorry, it's of type, yeah, it's of type walk behavior, Behavior and it's uh, called walk behavior. I should just choose shorter names. Let's actually, it was a long time ago since I compiled. Let me try to just compile, just to get rid of some errors so that we're not sort of pushing ourselves down into or digging a very deep hole. So line 19, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm missing a semicolon here. Line 40, I'm missing a semicolon here. And line 49, 49, I am missing a semicolon here. So apologies, okay. Uh, 16, walk behavior could not be found, 16, uh, yeah, because we haven't defined that interface. Okay, so let's get down to defining that interface. So let's say that there's an interface called walk behavior, okay? And what does that contain? Well, let's say nothing for now. Okay, so that, uh, that compiles, right? And then we just have a warning where it's like, oh, okay, well, you have this private field, but it's never used, but whatever, we're, we're getting to that. So what does walk behavior uh, demand. Well, it demands, I mean, let's, let's think about it. We're replacing the implementation of this thing, of, of walking, okay? So that means uh, it needs to return a string and it should be called walk, right? That's, that's a walk behavior, right? So, okay, let's compile that, still okay. Now, how do we then create a, so here we had a city duck. Let's change that for a wild duck now. Well, if we try to instantiate that, that doesn't work, right? Because there's the, the compiler says, well, the type wild duck does not contain a constructor that takes zero arguments. Of course, right? Because we just changed it. We say wild duck now takes a walk behavior. So we need to pass a walk behavior here, right? But how do we, like, what's that? Let's say walk behavior. What is that? Like, what do we put here? So that has to be like a new walk behavior. But what's that walk behavior? Uh, so let's say walk, so I, actually, let's look here. So actually, why did I start with walk? I thought I was going to start with fly, but whatever. I mean, now we're doing walk. So the walk behavior here is D. So maybe I should have kept the names just for this to be a bit more clear because now it's gonna be, it's gonna look a bit silly because now we have walk behavior uh, D, right? We instantiate that and let's define that, right? So then we have like a class called the walk behavior behavior uh, D and that implements the interface walk behavior cool and that of course needs to have an implementation whoop public public string walk and that needs to do something what does that do well it returns some kind of string and the string that it returns is essentially D right because that was the implementation we're replacing this implementation right so this used to be something like walking walking wildly, right? So, so that's the implementation that we would return here, walking wildly, right? But let's say D now, okay? And then how do we do, what, what do we do here, right? Now we've duplicated across two places. We have the behavior here and we have the behavior, uh, and we have the, or actually we don't have the behavior, sorry, what I meant is we have the implementation of the be behavior in the walk behavior D, but we also have the same implementation in the wild duck. But what, we're wanted, what we wanna do is we wanna delegate to this injected behavior. So here we do uh, this dot walk behavior dot walk, right? So what the wild duck is doing is that it's delegating to the thing that has been injected in the constructor. So this is constructor injecting. Uh, this is const sorry, this is constructor injection, as in dependency injection. We're dependency injecting a walk behavior. So wild duck depends on having a walk behavior, but it's coupling not to walk behavior D. It's not. It's not coupling to this thing, right? Because previously we were concretely coupling to that thing by saying return D, right? We're concretely uh, sort of 
adding the implementation there. But we could also do something like return new walk behavior d dot walk, right? That would be another way of concretely depending on walk behavior d. So we're we are coupling at compile time. We are we are binding like we're coupling essentially the the wild duck to the idea of walk behavior d but that's that's very harsh right maybe we don't want to do that so maybe we want to have a bit more flexibility and in a moment you'll see exactly why so if we don't do that we could instead just couple to the idea of having a walk behavior right so we're just saying i have the i have this walk behavior that's been dependency injected to me i'll execute the walk method of that oh sorry of course this needs to say return right because we know that walk behavior dot walk returns a string because of this interface. So let's just compile and see if we are okay here. Yeah, we're still okay. So let's, and it's also, maybe I should, I should run to see, wait, we get A back because we have a wild duck. Ah, sorry, because we're calling fly. So now we are discussing walk. So let's, I mean, our main program instantiates a walk behavior, instantiates a wild duck and console, uh, and, and then writes line like um, prints, um, the the result of calling walk on that on that duck and actually instead of having this intermediate variable let's just inline this and say walk behavior d right we'll just instantiate it like that so it's a wild duck where we pass in a walk behavior d into that duck and then we call walk on that so we compile that's fine and we run and we you can see we get d as output right so we have we have this implementation right walk behavior d now let's actually jump immediately to fly okay what if we did the same thing with fly? Well, what if wild duck don't only take a walk behavior, uh, walk behavior, but also takes a fly behavior? Okay, let's call that f. Or actually, hmm, yeah, okay. So fb, this should be called, and we call this wb. So this is wb, and then we have the same thing. This dot uh, fly behavior is fb. Let me line that up like so, and then we say fly behavior is uh, called fly behavior. So there's an instance variable called fly behavior of type fly behavior. Okay. Uh, now, if we try to compile, of course, that doesn't work because, oh, sorry. Okay. First, because we don't have anything called fly behavior. So let's add that interface first. We have the interface walk behavior. And then let's say uh, we have the interface fly behavior. Right. And then let's say that takes a, or it has a method called fly, which returns a string and takes no arguments. Let's compile again. Uh, and then we're back to this error. This is the one I was expecting, right? Or not back to this error, but then we have, I mean, back in as in that we had the same thing, but for walking. So it says that the compiler says the type wild duck does not contain a constructor that takes one argument, right? Again, like previously we had zero arguments, but now we have one argument because we are instantiating the wild duck. We are saying new wild duck and we're passing a walk behavior, but we're not actually passing a fly behavior. So let's say fly behavior A, let's make a new fly behavior. Let me actually uh, break the lines here so that this is possibly a bit more clear like this. Um, so the first argument is walk behavior D and the second is fly behavior A. So let's make a concrete fly behavior now, right? So fly behavior A is a fly behavior and it has an implementation of the method uh, fly that returns a string Actually, let me space out these because I made the same mistake here again. Yeah, maybe this was an odd choice. I shouldn't have chosen to add spaces before the parentheses, but whatever. Um, so, uh, what was I about to say? Yeah, so we need an implementation here, and this implementation here should be the same as the one that we have in the wild duck, right? So it, it returns A because that's the one we are replacing, right? So we are returning the string A, which, like, again, is a shorthand. We're just denoting that this is the implementation that we are now referring to A just to be able to differentiate between them. But it it's the one that used to be called something like flying wildly or something like that, where the string used to be flying wildly. Okay. So that's fine and dandy. Now we should compile, but we're not necessarily doing anything useful, as also evident by this compiler warning where it says that the private field uh, fly behavior in wild duck is assigned, but its value is never used, right? So, so let's get to that. So what we're actually doing is that we're trying to replace this method here, the, f the fly method of the wild duck. And 
clearly as we now we have the same situation as we had before but for like now for fly but we had it for walk before so we have the implementation here where we return the string a but we have the, exactly the same implementation here right and this is the one we want to use and this is the old one that we're trying to deprecate so what we would do is that we would simply say return this dot fly behavior dot walk uh sorry fly <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> okay um and yeah i mean you can see how we're doing that thing here and we're doing that thing here so we are delegating to this instance variable here and we are delegating to an instance variable here and both of these are uh, injected both of these behavior both of these strategies both of these algorithms right as in like uh, think about the the language in the in the Wikipedia page here. So uh, uh, enables selecting an algorithm at runtime, right? These are the algorithms, right? Walk behavior and fly behavior. But the, the, the or more concretely, these are not concrete algorithms. These are families of algorithms because these are interfaces. So we're saying, I want to be passed something through my constructor which adheres to this particular interface, but I have no idea what it is. And whatever you pass me that satisfies this interface, I'm happy with. That's going to be fine, right? Uh, so so that's fine. We just we just take these and that's constructor injection. And then we set set these instance variables and then we delegate to these whenever we need to fly or whenever we need to walk uh, and yeah this this should work right we compile no errors and we run and you can see we still get D because we are only printing the the walking behavior so let's actually say console yeah let's do this maybe so uh, walking colon plus and then this thing and then instead of walking we here do flying uh, like so let's line them up and then we say duck dot fly right so we're first printing uh, the results of calling walk and then we're printing the results of calling fly on this wild duck that we've instantiated by passing uh, the walk behavior D and fly behavior a right so let's compile and let's run that and then you can see we get walking behavior D and flying behavior a now Okay, you might be thinking, well, okay, first of all, I messed this up completely by using a lots of A's and D's and B's and whatnot, right? But what is the benefit of this, right? It seems like we've just created a lot of, let's say, indirection, right? Every, com every what is that? Every problem in computer science can be solved by another la layer of indirection, except the problem of too many layers of indirection, right? It seems that we've sort of added another level of indirection, like of abstraction, for, for no reason. But that's not true. Right? Think about this. Before we had the wild duck class, the city duck class, the mountain duck class, the cloud duck class, and who knows, we might have more classes, right? So it's not just the problem of that we've duplicate we we had this problem of duplicating code. We also had tons of classes. And check this out. What we're gonna do now is that we're just going to delete all these all these uh, ducks. Boof, gone, right? And we're gonna say, why do we even have different ducks? I have this wild duck that implements the interface duck. What's the point of that? Let's just say I have ducks, right? I have a duck. And now we don't even need, I mean, probably you would, you would want an interface, right? Probably you would want an interface, but, but now, currently I'm just thinking of this as a single class, right? But, uh, but yeah, probably, probably you would want a duck interface and then, yeah, I mean, uh, there's this, there's this quote, what is that? Like, I can't remember, and maybe it's Sandy Metz, but somebody said something along the lines of that you 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 never have a single thing of anything. Like you always, or many times you think that you have a single thing, but there's no such thing as a single thing. There's always another case, and if nothing else, nothing is always the other case. Where it's like you can have the thing, or you you can have not the thing, like the the absence of the thing. And there's also uh, there's also this other idea. Who's that? Man, my memory is really crap, but. Uh, some dude said something like one man's constant is another man's variable. And I think that's a great quote, right? It's like you think that this you think that this thing is never going to change, but that's from your perspective. And we don't know what the future holds and we don't know the way that other people think about this. So so yeah, I mean that I'm I'm just criticizing the fact that I'm using a concrete class here rather than an interface. But let's just use this for now, right? So what we can do is we can say, well, all ducks behave exactly the same. All the ducks that we looked at are in some abstract sense exactly the same duck, right? Because what they do is that they have walk behavior and they have fly behavior, and that's it. And then you can call fly, you can call fly on the duck and it returns a string, and you can call walk on the duck and it returns a string, 
right? So, so there's this idea of a duck. Let me move this upwards, right? So you have a duck, and then you have walking behavior, and you have flying behavior. Actually, maybe let, let's try to, let, let's organize this a bit. So let's put this here, let's put this in the end, and let's say, okay, uh, maybe this is the fly. So flying behaviors, uh, or actually, let's just say flying. And let's copy this and put that here. And let's say this is the section of walking. So maybe this is when you would actually <laughs> want to have multiple files. Uh, and this is the sort of duck section. Duck, right? So you have a duck, right? And that duck makes use of this abstract idea of walking. But it also makes use of this abstract idea of flying. And now, okay, we've lost mountain duck and what was their names? Like cloud duck and, and so forth. But we can actually reconstruct them, right? By saying, uh, by cr creating a bunch of different ducks. Let me put this back on one line because I'm gonna create multiple ducks. So let's say uh, this is maybe a uh, wild duck, let's say. Okay, so notice how this is now lowercase, as in that we don't have a class called wild duck anymore, but we are runtime, right? At runtime, we are constructing the idea of a wild duck by injecting some combination of walking and flying behaviors. And I can't remember what the what the other ones were, but like, uh, let's say we had a city duck and we have, uh, what is it, mountain, then, well, mountain duck, and uh, we had, the cloud duck okay and let's actually maybe now we should jump into like more more proper names for these behaviors so instead of walk behavior d let's say the wild duck walks uh so wild walking and uh, let's say wild flying okay the city duck has calm uh yeah calm yeah actually maybe let's just stick to this right it has calm flying and it has calm walking and the mountain duck has calm walking but it has high altitude flying oh flying oh my god flying and same thing here high altitude flying and cloud duck uh yeah no walking let's say uh no walking so sorry, these should be capital letters. And yeah, and then we just need to implement those classes, right? So let's say for, for uh, walk behaviors, we have what? We have uh, wild walking, calm walking, and no walking, right? So wild walking, wild walking, and then let's, let's copy this. Actually, let me just, I'm, s yeah, let's do it this way. Sorry, I'm just condensing. So wild walking, uh, wild and then we have calm walking and then we have no walking right and then we'll replace these strings so this is like walking wildly or something like that and then this is uh, walking calmly and this is no walking right and then we do sort of the same thing for the flying behavior so let me put this on one line as well uh, let's copy this three times and then let's see, we had three, right? We have wild flying, calm flying, and high altitude flying, right? So uh, fly, so let's say calm flying, and then we have wild flying, and we have high altitude flying, okay? And then let's, instead of these strings, uh, let's add some short implementations. So this is like flying calmly, and calmly, yeah, and this is, flying wildly and this is high altitude flying right all good was that correct yeah that's correct so let me just see if this compiles no 22 uh wild duck yeah sorry because i'm uh, I, I i forgot to rename the constructor so this constructor is now duck because the the name of the class is duck right um yeah let's compile that again oh hoo -hoo. okay line five wild duck line five why are we referring to wild duck yeah okay sorry because i'm trying to instantiate wild duck but now we are instantiating duck of course let's let's instantiate duck let me actually line this up as well so that looks a bit better uh and then let's remove these let's see okay the variable wild duck yeah okay so now we just have warnings the, the, the compiler is just saying like your code makes no sense because it essentially does nothing um 
so what do we do let's maybe do something like yeah okay i mean i could put this could put these in a list and then iterate over the list and then print them uh, but i think we're just going to do it concretely uh yeah but no but sorry okay that that makes no sense so let's just say so uh using system dot it's like collection or something like this right so then we could say list of a uh, duck uh, is a new list of duck, right? Let's just see if this works. Uh, collection, yeah, sorry, maybe generic. Generic. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Uh, so using, let me just Google this quickly. System is I thought it was system dot collection. Ah, collections. I am a moron. Collections generic. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then we can use a list, and then maybe let's immediately. Can I? Sorry, it's been a while since I did C sharp. Can I? Can I just do something like this? I'll just put a duck into it straight like this. Yeah, that's cool, okay. So then we'll copy this stuff. Uh, I'll remove the variables here. We'll put a comma here, a comma here, and no comma here. I'll remove this stuff, format this, and yeah, I missed this up. Ah, so like this, no, why? This one closes this one. This one closer. I would expect it to align like this. Let's just see if that compiles. Yeah, that compiles. So probably my code formatter in Vim is just not liking the syntax very much. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I can just add them manually, but who cares? So we're just instantiating a list. Maybe I shouldn't call it list. I should maybe call it ducks, right? So we're instantiating a list of a bunch of different ducks. And this is actually, if we just go back to the comments, right? Like this is the wild duck. And this is, what is this? Like the... Ooh, I can't remember. Let's go back. Uh, wild city, mountain, and cloud, right? City and mountain and cloud, right? So I'm just putting those comments so that we can remember that those are the different things that you're constructing. Like if you have reuse for these different classes, of course you would put them in variables or something like this, like or even create a class of some kind. But like my point is just that Previously, we used to have a class for this specific concept, but now we are so general in our code, like we've reached a level, a level of abstraction where it's just so easy to construct something like a wild duck that we don't even have to put it in a variable because it's so simple, right? Like we just inline it and put it inside of this list immediately. So then we have a, a list of these different ducks and then let's just say uh, for each uh, duck, d in ducks, uh, and then let's say console, and then we go back to the printing, right? Console, sorry, now I've done too much JavaScript. Uh, console write line uh, d dot uh, fly. And maybe we do the same thing again here where we say fly colon and then plus and add this. And we actually have to instantiate or run the fly method as well. So we do it like this. And then instead of fly here, we say uh, walk. So we run that. And then this is walk. And then let's space that out and let's compile. Hmm, okay. Uh, 13. 13. Uh, and then let's terminate that line. So, so yeah, I missed the semicolon. So that seems to compile fine. And, ah, okay. So now that runs, right? Maybe we should actually put... Hmm, actually, sorry. What I should have done is probably maybe something like this. Like we should have added a string here where it's like wild duck and this is like city let's actually quickly do that who cares like mountain and this is cloud and then here we space it out like this and space it out like this and now we can actually remove the comments so let me try to do that so i'll replace that by oh oh my god so i'll replace that by this and this and this and cloud Oof. And like this, right? So then we need to change the duck class so that we're now also taking a name here and then we're saving the name 
is equal to this name that we were passed in. And we have an instance variable which is of type string and it's called name. And then uh, you can ask it for its name, right? So maybe I would use, uh, no, let's actually do this public. You could use getters and setters, right? But who cares? Like um, string get name. Actually, let's just say, whoops, my, what am I doing? String name like this, and we'll return this dot name, right? So actually, there's this, let's pause for a reflection. There's an interesting point by, again, I can't remember who actually said that, but there's somebody who said that the way you invoke, the way you extract a property from an object should not be syntactically different from the way you invoke a method, right? Because if you choose to go the property route first and then decide later down the line to uh, refactor and change it to a method, if the syntax is different, there's a lot of your code that suddenly breaks because you've you've sort of coupled to the idea of having uh, or, 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 or with co of calling the property calling quotation marks calling the property or accessing the property without parentheses but in a language like C sharp when you move from properties to methods then you have to add these parentheses so that's a, it's a critique to language designers I think that's pretty interesting and in Ruby for example there is no difference but anyways but that would be one argument for going this route where we choose a, a <coughs> sorry about that where, where we choose a method instead of a, a property but anyways that's completely irrelevant to the <laughs> what we're trying to achieve here so the reason I did that is that we can now just access the name here as well. Uh, maybe we add a some kind of arrow here as well. And then let's copy this stuff and replace this stuff here. So the reason we're doing that is that we get a bit more uh, sanity in, in the output that we had just now. Again, pretty silly, pretty irrelevant. <laughs> it compiles and then we run and then we can see we have a bunch of output. Let me actually put this here instead. Let's line break and then let's run. So. Here's the output, right? And you can see, okay, for flying, the wild duck is flying wildly. For walking, the wild duck is walking wildly. For for the city duck, it's flying calmly. And uh, again, for the city duck, it's it's walking calmly. For, whoops, whatever now. For the mountain duck, uh, we have high altitude flying, but for the same mountain duck, we also have walking calmly. So notice how this behavior is shared with this behavior, or not shared with this behavior. This behavior is shared across the mountain duck and across the city duck. And then for the cloud duck, we have high altitude flying, right? And we have uh, no walking. So no walking is a one-off, like nobody else has no walking, but high altitude flying is shared across the cloud duck and the mountain duck, right? So we're sharing behavior across different classes, right? And, uh, and yeah, I mean, this is essentially the strategy pattern. This hopefully you can see how this applies like literally like everywhere. Dependency injection is everywhere in, in object oriented programming. Like when you really start to use objects and when, when, you, when you start to use polymorphism, when you start to use interfaces and when you start to favor composition and you try to write programs with a high level of abstraction, then this will show up like everywhere and this becomes second nature and suddenly it's a bit odd to you that they are calling it strategy pattern. I'm just realizing we didn't even look at the UML diagram or any of this, which is why I picked up the Wikipedia page here. So we'll see if I do this in the next one or not. But uh, again, like if you want to talk about the UML diagram, please do uh, consult the, the whiteboard uh, series. Again, the link is in the description. But but again, so this shows up uh, like literally everywhere. And I, I, I was thinking I, I want to give you like a more concrete example as well. So I'm not gonna actually code this out because this took quite some time and I want to save your time in mind. But uh, recently, for example, just as a concrete example, I wrote a Monte Carlo simulation. I qu just quickly hacked it up in, in object-oriented Ruby. And when I say quickly hacked up, I just thought about this a moment ago. I actually mean uh, hacking up as in I used abstraction, right? I wrote it in object-oriented language, so I used object-oriented constructs. Like I didn't like write it as if it was procedural just because I want to move fast. In my mind, the way to move fast is to maintain high abstraction because then you can make, you, you can quickly pivot in any direction that you want without having to pay a high cost. Because as you keep abstraction high, you keep control over your code base, right? And, and I think like in some sense, maybe that's a good way of thinking about it. Control is the thing that costs a lot when suddenly you have to make a change 
in a place where you don't have control. Another way of thinking about this is like the term technical debt, right? So maintaining a high level of abstraction tends to keep technical debt down. So whenever you have an unsuspected, no, an un, un, unexpected, <laughs> whenever you have an unexpected change, uh, that change is an extremely costly because you just say, oh, okay, well, you mean I, I'll just inject this strategy instead of that strategy, fine, and then and you just shoot that in. And even if it's not that simple, uh, you, you all also tr you avoid scenarios where it's like, well, you've constructed like 15 different ducks and then somebody's like, well, actually ducks are the same in this dimension, so you need to turn them into one, or maybe that's a bad example, but it's more like we want to have this change apply to all ducks and you're like, Okay, okay, I'm just gonna go through every duck and apply this change to every duck, right? As soon as you start to have like tons of classes like this, where where there is a non non uh, condensed variation, that's a strange way of saying it. What I want to say is that where you have uh, hmm, where the single responsibility principle is broken, so where you have lots of classes under the same family, like under the same interface of the same superclass, where these classes do many things. Like that's a telltale sign that you're in a world of hurt or like there's gonna come <laughs> a day of reckoning where, where you might have to pay expensively for, for treading down that path, right? So what you want is very, very small classes that do very, very specific things. And dependency injection slash strategy pattern is the way in object-oriented programming to achieve this. It's like the way. <laughs> Right? Uh, if you disagree with me or if you agree with me, please do shoot something in the comments and let's discuss. And also let me know what you think about this format because I have the intention of uh, keeping this going and getting through all of the patterns, at least the ones that we uh, discussed in the other whiteboard series. Anyways, uh, thanks a ton. Thanks a ton for watching. Uh, glad to have you here. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this series. Remember to subscribe so that you won't miss the next one. Uh, check out the books in the description if you want some great books on design patterns. I highly recommend those books. Uh, and uh, yeah, like the video if you appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.